The Neuroscience of Opioid Use Disorder. The Opioid Epidemic. Overdose is the number one cause of death in Americans under the age of 50. Nearly two-thirds of overdose deaths are now caused by the class of drug known as opioids. Over the last few years, we've lost around 70,000 people every year to this epidemic. Since 2000, we've lost over 700,000 Americans to overdose. That's as many Americans as died in World War I, World War II, and the Vietnam, Korean, and Middle East wars combined. Opioid addiction is ruining lives and tearing families and communities apart. It's important for first responders to understand the science of addiction. First responders have a unique opportunity to bring compassion, hope, and practical solutions to individuals and communities affected by the opioid epidemic. One of the most frustrating things for those on the front lines is the experience of treating the same people over and over again, seeing them overdose and continue to use. Why would someone continue to do such serious harm to themselves and their families? Why don't they just quit? It's critical to recognize that addiction, or the preferred term opioid use disorder, is not a moral failure, but a disease. It is not a choice. It's part of a destructive and predictable response of that susceptible person and their brain to opioids. To begin with, what is an opioid? Opioid refers to any drug acting on the opioid receptors in the brain. This includes oxycodone, hydrocodone, methadone, fentanyl, carfentanyl, and heroin. Pharmaceutically, opioids are prescribed to help manage severe, acute, or chronic pain. By activating the brain's opioid receptors, opioids diminish the body's sensitivity to pain, helping to block it. But opioids have a secondary effect. They cause the brain to release artificially high levels of dopamine and endorphins. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter. It regulates movement, emotion, cognition, motivation, and pleasure. Endorphins create a feeling of well-being and alleviate anxiety and depression. Together, dopamine and endorphins are the most important components of the brain's reward system. Humans and our brains are wired to do things that increase our dopamine and endorphin levels. This is why we feel great after an intense workout, why we feel joy when we help others and serve our community, and why we feel good after getting a hug from our kids or loved ones. In a regular brain state, inhibitory neurons put out neurotransmitters that prevent dopamine from being constantly released. The reason you feel so good after that long run is that exercise naturally releases endorphins, which bind to the opioid receptors, block the inhibitory neurons, and release dopamine, triggering those calming, energizing feelings we all enjoy so much. Opioids trigger receptors in the brain that artificially flood the brain's reward center with dopamine and endorphins. The rush, or high, that opioids cause is the reason people first start misusing these drugs, but there is a misconception about opioid use disorder that we have to clear up. Many think that people use just to feel pleasure or to feel high, but actually we know that most people who develop OUD are genetically predisposed to addiction. Scientists estimate that around 60% of addiction is based on genetic factors. People who struggle with anxiety, depression, stress, or other substance use disorders, or have a history of trauma, are especially prone to addiction. In these patients, endorphin levels and dopamine levels are often naturally low, so the first time they use an opioid is often the first time they feel a sense of relief, of being normal. Let's dive deeper. On a normal, daily basis, the brain naturally produces between 40 on a bad day and 100 on a great day nanograms per deciliter of dopamine. This sounds like a pretty wide range until you know that opioids can trigger dopamine releases on the order of two to three times what is naturally possible. Methamphetamine use can cause dopamine levels of over 1,100 nanograms per deciliter, more than 10 times what the brain is designed to accommodate. As people continue using opioids and other addictive substances, the body produces less and less dopamine and endorphins on its own, which means people have to use more and more drugs to get back to that same feeling of euphoria or relief. These changes to the brain can start in as little as three days. So first, people may use the drug to get high. Then, as the brain stops making dopamine and endorphins, they have to use just to feel normal. Eventually, as dopamine and endorphin levels keep dropping, people have to keep using just not to feel sick. If use continues, the cells of the brain that produce dopamine and endorphins begin to die, and the brain is forever changed. When people stop using the drug completely, the amount of dopamine in their brain can drop to 10 or 20 nanograms per deciliter, far less than the ordinary level that helps us get out of bed and make rational choices. 
The reward and motivation systems of the brain are destroyed by opioids. And as the brain becomes more and more dependent on opioids just to have dopamine and endorphins, a person with OUD will enter into survival mode, placing their need to obtain opioids and not feel sick over the rational needs of maintaining a job, caring for their family, eating, or caring for themselves. People use knowing they may overdose. People use knowing they may die. During an opioid overdose, the drug causes sedation and overwhelms the brain's respiratory centers, taking away a person's impulse to breathe. Symptoms include slow or no breathing, drowsiness, unresponsiveness, blue or purple lips, skin and fingernails, and pinpoint pupils. Knowing what we now know about how opioids work, let's consider what happens to the body when we administer naloxone. Naloxone doesn't actually remove opioids from the body. It simply kicks opioids off the brain's opioid receptors and blocks them from having an effect. The body must still metabolize the opioid to eliminate it. Naloxone only lasts for around an hour. So if a person has ingested a long-acting opioid, such as Oxycontin or Methadone, repeated doses of naloxone might be required to reverse an opioid overdose over the course of hours or days. For powerful opioids like fentanyl or carfentanyl, multiple doses of naloxone, sometimes 10 times what is normally given, might be required to reverse the effects. If a person has a brain that is dependent on opioids, administering naloxone will induce immediate withdrawal, which usually comes along with symptoms like nausea, vomiting, confusion, and agitation, and will want to start using again just to get their dopamine and endorphin levels back up to a place where they feel normal or closer to normal. First responders play a critical role in stemming the opioid epidemic both by saving lives on the scene and also by encouraging patients to seek treatment and by sharing data and experiences with community and public health partners. 